Get again. The simple believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. The, ne the very next verse. One who is wise is cautious and turns away from evil, but a fool is reckless and careless. Yet again. The simple believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. Now, ladies and gentlemen, God developed this message. I can't change it. I kind of argue with God at some point. that Cain got him back talking God again. I do things for a reason, but yet again, God gets the glory. The Lord gets the glory. I did not author this message. I was very uncomfortable, like I say in some of the Psalms I wrote. I'm very uncomfortable with some parts of this message because the Bible says, whoever says you fool is liable to the fire of hell. And I'm like, I don't, I didn't want to say it. But the way it pans out is Satan insisted that I say you fool because Satan insisted that I be liable to the fire of hell. And I'm doing my very best to show everybody mercy, mercy. I'm over here sowing mercy, mercy, mercy. So God said, you know what? The way God's got my heart set, this is why I get to do things. This is why I got a naughty pass, Elsa Jean. God has set my heart. Satan, convince me that this sin is righteously righteous. And when you convince me that this sin used in this scenario, in this context, this is how God fucks Satan. God made my heart what my heart says. What my heart says is Satan, convince me, because Satan will do his very best. But what Satan does is he will not stop. He will not stop until he accomplishes what he set out to accomplish. He will not stop. Ladies and gentlemen, no means no. That's rape. So God has my heart set on, convince me that this sin is righteously righteous. Give me a reason. And when you convince me that this sin used in this context is righteous, and then I chat with God and I chat with the Lord and say, is it cool if I do this? And they give me a thumbs up. If you convince me that this is a righteous decision, if you convince me that this is a righteous decision, and I have to go ahead and I, and I look at God and I look at Jesus, and they say, it's cool. If you can do that, Satan, then you will get me to do that alleged sin. So, ladies and gentlemen, why do I do things that the Bible declares to be sin? Because I was cursed by Satan, and he was literally brain-raping me to sin. He was brain-raping me to sin. So God set my heart to Satan. Convince me that this, this is a righteous, this is why we kept saying, do not judge, you will not be judged. There are seven levels to my righteousness, and I'm not seeking my own glory. Praise me and be cursed. This is the Spirit speaking through me. Satan was, is in the brain-raping business. So God has my heart set on Satan. Convince me that this thing that Jesus declared to be a sin, convince me, convince me that it is a righteously righteous decision, not righteous, but be, convince me it is more righteous than righteous. Convince me it is a righteous decision. Convince me it is a righteous decision. And once you convince me it's a righteous decision, then I am going to ask God and Jesus themselves, God and Jesus, is this a righteous decision? And if they give me a thumbs up, at that point in time, when I do that act, Satan is sinning. Satan is sinning. He's guilty of brain rape, and he's guilty of the sin that I allegedly committed. And, a, and righteousness is attributed to my name. Because I am making that, I, I am sinning, sinning with God's permission. Because yet again, now I'm not sinning. Yet, yet, ladies and gentlemen, I do my very best not to sin. I'm not perfect. I'm saved by the grace of God and the grace of Jesus. You know, Jesus is my righteousness. I would, I would not sin. But yet again. And by the way, God would have to enable it in my brain and in my heart for me to do this action. Because I am very sensitive to what I think is wrong. I do. God is my brain set. I make the most righteous decision I can possibly make at all times. I can't help it. I make the most righteous decision I can possibly make at all times. I can't help it. I'm a machine. I'm crafted for a job. Which is fucking Satan. I'm the cock of Christ. I'm crafted for a job, which is fucking Satan. I just make the most righteous decision I know to make at all times. I never make a decision. If, even if it's a righteous decision, if it seems slightly unrighteous in a particular circumstance, I make them, I try to make... Like one of the best things is Satan started setting traps for me when this curse began. And what I started doing is running into the trap. Like Sergeant Austin, I bet down, I bet it like, the, like U.S. Army Rangers know where I'm coming from. I bet it down in the briar patch. Because Satan would try to funnel me into a certain direction. So I started running at the trap, bedding down to the briar patch. I started making the stupidest decision in the name of faith. I started looking at a situation and making the, making the stupidest decision in the name of faith. 
And that was attributed to me as righteousness. I literally just up and went to Louisiana four times. I just up and left. So, so do not judge, you will not be judged. Because Satan was trying to brain rape me to sin. So God set my heart to convince me this is righteous. And then, once I have permission from God and Jesus, and you have convinced me beyond a shadow of a doubt that making this decision is righteous, then I will do it with God's permission. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan is retarded. He took that bait. The reason why I say you fool, well, it was a trap. Literally, now I don't go around saying you fool just for the concept. But the reason why I, for people need to be humbled because they think they have outsmarted God. And they are retorted. If it's a factual statement, it's a factual statement. If it's a factual statement, it's a factual statement. Period. Because yet again, I read in Proverbs, Proverbs is quick, Proverbs is quick to call somebody a fool. And then I read, you fool, you hypocrites. Jesus taught me there's a class. And Jesus himself has to teach you this. But I have an already, I got a pass for whooping ass, is what I got. A pass for whooping ass. But yet again, the old, and, and the black, black people are the Israelites. And the Israelites have more bodies than anyone else in the world history. In the law, it is written, do not murder. Do not murder. But, God will command his king to go into a nation and kill every man, woman, and child. Now, is that murder? No, because God told him to do that. I am told to do the things I am told to do. So do not judge. You will not be judged. You can investigate my message to see if I am sent from God. But do not judge. You will not be judged. My day of judgment has come and it has passed. I was judged with zero mercy at all whatsoever. No mercy. My judgment was no mercy. My judgment was no mercy at all whatsoever. Every way Satan could possibly curse me, he cursed me. I mean, every which way he could possibly curse me, he cursed me. Every which way he could possibly curse me, he cursed me. My, my judgment was zero mercy at all whatsoever. So do not judge me. Do not judge me. Do not judge me. Because, as it says, this is your day of judgment. And I have been sent to tell you that it's your day of judgment. But I am sent to tread the wine, pre the wine press of God's wrath. And I sit on the throne of judgment, and I judge no one. So do not judge me, because I judge no one. Let's yet again, ladies and gentlemen, God ensured that there are seven levels of righteousness to my every decision. And God has a message he is going to teach out of all of this. I'm an instrument of wrath, and I'm the only begotten son of the wrath of God. I have a job. I am whatever you say I am. If I wasn't, then why would I say I am? I can't help it. I can't help it. And when God enables my heart to resist the way I am, I beg for mercy, and I beg for other people's mercy. But I can't help the way I am. I can help what I do, but I can't help the way I am. I can't. I've tried. God has made me a certain way. Jesus has made me a certain way. Jesus Christ is my righteousness. So in the same in the same way, Christ made me the way I am. There are many parts to the body of Christ. I'm his dick. I am the way I am. God has crafted me to be an angel of wrath. Jesus has crafted me to be an angel of wrath. I can't help the way I am. But yet again, all the time I'm so in wrath, I'm so in mercy. I'm trying my best to sow mercy, and I know that I'm sowing mercy. I'm sowing ver I am sowing verbal wrath to put the fear of God in you verbally. So that way God doesn't have to kill every man, woman, and child. So do not judge, you will not be judged. Because I am literally, intentionally, showing no mercy verbally, so God will show you mercy physically. That is the moral of the story. I am intentionally Sowing mercy, begging God to show mercy. But if you look at it on face value, it's absolutely no mercy. Well, it is what it is. I have a job from God. And if you don't repent, it's going to be no mercy. Now, you're not going to be in the boat with Satan. But it's either mercy or it's no mercy. And that's the moral of the story. So do not judge. You will not be judged. The meaning which you measure. 